There are few places in the Quran where Allah elaborates His guidance for trial. Human beings are created in this life and one of the goal, one of the purposes of this life is to be continuously tested. And things that we have been given, all of them are actually tests. The good things that we've been given and the bad things that we've been given. And Allah talks about the fact that life is a test constantly and this is not something that none of you are unfamiliar with. You've heard this all the time. But in one particular place in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah talks about tests that are difficult, meaning not the tests of good, but the tests of bad. When you go through a difficult situation, or people are causing you harm, or you're going through duress, then that's a very difficult kind of test, and it's at those points that a lot of people lose their faith. So Allah Azza wa Jal gave a passage to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at an occasion, this was later on in the Meccan period, so the Prophet ﷺ was already preaching the message of Islam for nearly a decade now, and things had escalated. So not only were the Muslims being made fun of, or they were being ridiculed or pushed away, or you know, uh, you know, they were they were kicked out of their families and things like that, or economically boycotted. It things took the next step. Now Muslims were being tortured. So one such Muslim was Khabbab bin Arat radiAllahu anhu who they grabbed him, the mushrikun grabbed him and they took coal and they, they heated coal on the ground and then they forced him to lie down on it, on his back and then they stood on him. So his back kept on burning and he kept screaming and they wouldn't get off of him and until his entire back just melted off and he was completely like traumatized and burnt and in that state he came to the Prophet wasallam, and he cried and he said, Ya Rasulullah, we're, we're the ones that have the truth. Why is Allah letting this happen to us? Why, if you're doing the right thing, why should bad things happen to you? Right? And, and these are the best people. They're the ones that are supporting the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if they're, they're not just doing some random good deed, they're doing the best of all deeds. And yet these terrible things are happening to them. Now this is an important question because a lot of people say, I'm trying to do the right thing. Then why are bad things happening to me? Right? And before we ask ourselves that question, why is it happening to me? You and I have to remind ourselves that there were people that came before us that were much better than us. Prophets. People that supported prophets. And those prophets themselves and the people who supported them went through much more difficult things than we'll ever go through. That's a reality. Allah put them through it. Our Prophet ﷺ was publicly humiliated constantly for over a decade. Then there was attempts made at his life. His own family used to abuse him every single day. And that's the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he had to escape from his own home that he loves to death. He, he has to escape from it because they're trying to kill him. So it's his entire life. Actually, one way of looking at it is his entire life Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a life of pain. Is a life of extreme pain. And the people that were close to him or decided to follow his way, the pain came with it. You know, sometimes people say, well, why should I follow Islam? What's it got for me? Like, what do I get if I follow this religion? Is my life going to get better? Are my problems going to get solved? Am I going to get a job? Am I going to get healthier? Because, you know, people say like, something like, man, I didn't used to pray. And then I had exam season coming. So I started making salah and stuff. And I made so much dua and I stopped doing haram things. And I still failed. What's the point? Like, it didn't work. You know, because the whole idea is, if I turn to religion, it should do something for me. It should help me in some way. That's the whole point, right? So, and this, this is actually what many other religions offer. You go to the temple and you go to some church or you go to some place of worship and you have some idol in front of you and you put some things in front of that idol and say, I really need a new car. Or you put something in front of it and say, man, I really need this problem to go away. Can you help this problem go away? Because the entire promise is that something in this life will get better if you turn to this religion, right? And then people turn to saints and turn to idols and turn to other forms, objects because they want their worldly problems to be solved. But, the, but Quran is painting a completely opposite picture. These people are coming, turning to God and everything used to be normal before they turned to Islam. And when they turn towards the Prophet ﷺ, their family hates them, they lost all their money, they're being tortured, they're being burnt alive. And like their life turned to hell. Because they, be, because they accepted Islam. So unlike any other religion where you could say, you know, you should accept his faith because things are going to work out for you. I actually, this is a true story. I went, many of you are familiar with Joel Olstein, And he's a very famous preacher, uh, you know, out in Houston. 
and I was curious about about his popularity. I wanted to know what is he, what message is he giving to people? And by the way, about the Bible, Allah Azza wa Jal about the Bible and the Torah, the Torah and the Injil, Allah does say that in it there is still some light and some guidance. Allah doesn't reject the previous revelations. So I wanted to see for myself what it's like when, when you know he preaches and what how do people take in what he's saying, what his sermon is like. And I actually he was a couple of years ago on Christmas Eve actually he was coming to Dallas at the American Airlines Stadium, and I bought tickets and I went and I sat up in the bleachers and I observed the entire program for three hours. I watched the program. I wanted to see what they do, what what goes on in there. And I kid you not, the entire time he's him, his mom came, his mom said, I used to have cancer. The doctors told me I had just a year. And I said, Jesus, you're gonna give me 15 years. And you know what? It's been 30 years. And everybody's clapping. And then, then he comes on and he says, this, this problem got solved up. And then at the end of it all, the promise was this year, God's gonna help you with that divorce. He's gonna help you with that lawsuit. You're gonna get a new job. You're gonna get that car. You're gonna get that promotion. This is the year of the do. This is the year where things are gonna work out for you because you know, you turn to Jesus, things will work out for you. They gave guarantees over the next 12 months, everybody's economic situation and health situation and cancer diagnosis is gonna turn around. They gave these guarantees of this world for three hours and people were like, yes, yes. It's all gonna work out because the promise isn't of anything but a better life here, a better life here. The Qur'an gives a very harsh reality check. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created the human being drowned in exhausting, painful labor. This life is exhausting, it's difficult. For some people it's financially exhausting, for other people it's mentally exhausting, for other people it's physically exhausting. There are different kinds of exhaustions. Sometimes your problems come from your own body. Sometimes problem comes from the people around you. Sometimes problem comes because from the weather. They come from all kinds of things. But this life isn't a luxury, and it's not suffering either. There are way, there are things Allah gave us in this life that can make this a good life. But the Quran's definition of a good life is very different from anybody else's definition of a good life. For everybody else, a good life means nobody's giving me a hard time, I have, I have decent money in the bank, I have a car, I have a house, I have health. That's a good life. I got it made. You know, pretty close to the American dream. But the, the Qur'an's picture of a good life is no matter what storms are happening around you and outside you, and no matter what people are doing, there's a calm inside you. You're content with Allah, and you know that whatever you're going through is going to come and go, but the only thing of value, the real treasure you have to protect is actually your iman inside, your faith inside. And everything else can shake, money can come and money can go, job can come and job can go, people can come in your life and people can go. People you thought will never leave you will leave you. That's fine. And people that, you know, you depend on Allah decides sometimes people are so connected to their, their, their family, their parent, their sibling, their daughter, their son, their spouse, and they die. And they die and that breaks their heart. It's not an easy thing to cope with death. But you know what Allah does? Allah Azza wa gives strength to the heart. And He allows you to pass through those tests. Because no matter what happens, what bad stuff happens outside, the inside is preserved if you, if you turn to Allah. And if you could do that, then you've succeeded, then you have a good life. Then you've succeeded in this life. This is really when, when we talk about the greatest successes in history. Like take the example of Ibrahim alayhi one of the most successful human beings that ever lived. How is it successful to be kicked out of your home? How is it successful to be homeless? How is it successful to be told you have to slaughter your son? Or you have to leave your family in the middle of a desert? How is it successful to be thrown into a giant fire? Right? That, that success isn't on the outside. If you look at this man's life, you know, you're like, he's what? What happened to him? He was thrown in a fire? He was kicked out of his house? He was almost killed by a mob? That doesn't look like a good story. You know, when you, when you drive by a, somebody's home, they've got a beautiful mansion, you're like, wow, these people are so successful. But if you see a homeless person, you say, man, this guy's, a, you know, what happened to him? How did they fail at life? Right? Because our definition of success, it looks like certain things. And our definition of failure looks like certain things. Our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa lived in a cave for a couple of years, in a cave. He tied rocks to his belly so the stomach wouldn't growl. If you saw another person living in a cave and they can't eat normal food, they're eating leaves, you wouldn't call that success. But we, our messenger is the greatest success of all, sallallahu alayhi wa 
Allah says in this passage, and usually when I give a khutbah, I talk about maybe one ayah, maybe two ayat. But today, I'm going to try to talk to you about an entire passage in the few minutes I have left. Because I want you to hear what Allah is saying about this trial. I won't dive deep into every ayah. I'll just have you hear what Allah is saying. And it's clear enough. Even if you don't dive deep, the message is clear enough in Allah's words. Alif Lam Mim, a hasib nas Have people assumed, Allah says after Alif Lam Mim, have people assumed an yutraku? By the way, I have to say this to you. Why, why does, you know, Alif Lam Mim is how the surah begins. Nobody knows what Alif Lam Mim means. Right? And Allah is teaching us something. Why would a teacher teach you something and you don't know what it means? Allah is starting the surah by saying, there are some things you will never understand. There are some things you will never get the answer to. Like, why is this happening to me? That's an answer you will not get. Just like the answer to what question? What does Alif Lam Mim mean? What do all my difficulties mean? What do all these challenges mean? Why are people treating me like this? Why, what is, it all, why is Allah doing this? You will not have the answer to those questions yet, no. He says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا Did people imagine that they're just going to be left alone? أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا That they just say that they have faith? وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ And they're not going to be put to a burning test? They're not going to be put, you know, fitna is actually in old Arabic when you take gold and you put it under extreme fire because unless you have extreme heat, you cannot melt gold. And only then the impurities that are deep inside the gold burn off. You can't Purify gold with a, with a sponge and some you know, laundry detergent or some dishwasher soap. That's not how you purify gold. You have to melt gold under extreme heat. Allah compares our trials in life to gold being purified. And that's His way of saying you're gold. That's His way of saying you're valuable. And there are some, some, some impurities deep inside you and me that cannot come out unless you are put to an extreme test. Unless you're put to the extreme test. So he says, did people think they're just going to say they have faith and they're not going to be put to burning tests? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ We absolutely tested, thoroughly test, burning, we gave burning tests to those who came a long time before them. I've been doing this. You're not new. This is not a new story. This is not why is this happening to me. I've been doing this since Adam alayhi salam, Allah is telling us. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ but what, 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 why is he doing it? Then Allah will expose those, He will absolutely expose those who are truthful when they say they actually have faith in Allah, and He will expose those that are liars. This is Allah's way of telling who's, who actually says they have Iman and who doesn't have Iman, who's actually a liar. Did people imagine that those that commit sins, now what is Allah talking about? One person is being burnt. But there are those who are burning him. So one question is, why is this happening to me? The answer to that is, did you think you're just gonna not be tested? That you're, you're just gonna, why, why, why should I follow Islam? Look at what it got me. Look at my back. Look at what it got me. And you have people like Khabab bin Arat who go through this test and they have sabr. And even when they cry out, they realize this is a trial from Allah and their iman only increases. But on the other hand, the question comes, how come these people are getting away with it? Why doesn't Allah strike them down? How come they did so much evil and nothing happened to them? Look at them, they're happy, they're laughing. They have so much money, you know? How come, there's no justice, I don't see justice. I still see them walking around. After everything they did to me, they get to have a happy life? How so? And I'm suffering and they're happy? Allah doesn't see that they're the criminals? And Allah says, did people who have committed evil acts, did they think they got ahead of us? Yasbiquna actually is, is used when, you know, there's like a chase and the cops are chasing you or the authorities are chasing you, but your car's too fast and it just gets away. Allah says, the people who commit crimes, did they think they just got ahead of us? They just escaped? What a terrible decision they made. You know, this guy is running from the cops. He can't even see the cops in the background anymore. He goes, ha 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 ha. But actually there's a entire police patrol right in front. You know, and he's going full speed right into it. You understand? That's Allah says, what a terrible decision they made. They think they can escape God? They can escape Allah? These criminals? What is Allah doing? He's telling the person who's being tested, this is not your problem. Giving them justice, when will I give it? How will I give it? That's not your problem. I'm telling you that I will give them perfect justice. But not on your terms, on my terms, Allah is telling us. On His terms. We, the, the world doesn't work on our terms. The, work, the world works on Allah's terms. You know, 
ما يحكمون من كان يرجو لقاء الله فإن أجل الله لآت وهو السميع العليم He says whoever has been hoping that one day they will meet with Allah well that meeting is coming Meaning, if you never lost hope in Allah, no matter what bad happens, and you knew one day I'm going to stand in front of Allah, and He will know everything I went through. He will know all of it. He won't dismiss any of it. He knows every, every turbulence of every heartbeat that I felt. Every anxiety that I He knows it. He says that meeting is coming, and He's hearing everything, and He knows everything. He knows, He hears everything you and I say, and He hears everything we don't even say, we just think. Even what we feel, he knows it. He knows the states of our hearts. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ If you hear, if you remember nothing else from this khutbah, just I pray you and I can nail this, this teaching into our hearts. Nail it, dig it into our hearts. He says, whoever continues to struggle, what that means is they continue to struggle to do the right thing. They don't abandon their faith. They hold on to what's right. Whoever continues to struggle, no matter what the pain, فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ They are only doing it for themselves. Don't you ever dare think you're doing something for Allah. Like it's for, you know, like you're doing Allah a favor. Like why should I do this for Allah? No, Allah says when, when you do the very best you can do, when you do jihad, you're only doing it for who? Yourself. When you, Khabbab bin Arat is being told, radiallahu anhu, when you lost your back, the skin on your back, you did that not for Allah, but you did that for yourself. That was a favor to you for yourself. Because when you stand in front of Allah that day, you will say, Ya Allah, can you send me back? I want to get burnt again. Because it was so worth, now I realize what it was worth. When you meet with Allah, then, that, then it changes. He says, when we meet with Allah, you know, When we come in front of Allah that day, the true believer, you know what's going to happen? Allah is going to make us laugh and He's going to make us cry. Both of those things are going to happen. We're going to, the joy will make, make us laugh. And the, just the overwhelming, you know when you, sometimes you're, you're missing somebody, you haven't seen them, you've been thinking about them, you've been talking about them, and eventually they come over, they fly over. And when you see people that are at the airport, relatives meeting each other, you see the weirdest thing. They're laughing and they're crying at the same time. Because this is a meeting of those, the two who love each other deeply. He says, وَالَّذِي أَضْحَكَ وَأَبْكَ He says that meeting is coming. And if you've been struggling, you're only doing it for your own benefit. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Listen to this carefully. He said, Allah has no need of any people of all, any of the nations. Allah doesn't need you or me. Allah doesn't need my prayers. Allah doesn't need my du'as. Allah doesn't need me to stay away from haram things. Allah doesn't need me to control my tongue. Allah doesn't need me for anything. If I am doing those things, I've only done them for my own benefit, for my own self. That is Allah's teaching. And then He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَحْسَنَ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And those who have faith and do good deeds, what that means is even when they're going through a really hard time, they hold on to their faith and they don't let go of good things. They don't let go of prayer, for example. The first good deed is prayer, right? Because when people, people go through a tough time, they stop praying. I don't feel like it. I don't know, something stops me from praying. When you, when you do that to yourself, you're cutting your connection to Allah off. That prayer is what helps you in your life. It would get, it's what gives me and you the strength in our hearts to deal with all of our problems. You're cutting off your medication. You're cutting off your own medication. I'm cutting off my own medication when we're not praying anymore. Even if you feel like, I don't feel anything when I pray, doesn't matter, just keep, just hold. Even if it becomes thin like a thread, like it feels like it's barely there, don't let go of the prayer. It'll become stronger later, it's fine. Don't let go of it. If you barely feel like praying, pray, at least pray the fuff. Just do some, don't, don't skip a prayer. Don't do it. Don't do that to yourself. Because you're harming yourself. Allah says, if you can do that, لَنُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَحْسَنَ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ We will bury away their sins. The mistakes they made will be gone, will be completely buried. Allah guarantees that. And He says, we will compensate them with the very best of what they used to do. Understand this beautiful promise from Allah. We've done some good things in life, we've done some bad things in life. And sometimes we've done some pretty great things. Maybe one day you caught a Laylatul Qadr. You don't even know. Or maybe one day you did such a remarkable good deed. Not every day, but that one day in your life you did something pretty amazing. If Allah buries away your sins, and you can hold on to His faith, you know what He does? Let me give you by example. You know sometimes uh, 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 in a class, in a semester, in like math class, there are five exams, right? 
And one exam you scored a 20, one exam you scored a 60, one exam you scored a 50, one exam you scored a 100, miraculously. And the teacher says, I will take your highest score and I will make that your entire grade. I won't average everything, I'll just take your highest score and that's your grade. You're like, wow, that's awesome. That's exactly what Allah is saying. Allah is saying, if you can survive with your faith, and if you don't abandon your faith, and you do good things, you don't let go of good things, then I will take the very best things you've ever done, and I will give you the reward based on your very best. Like He won't gauge us on every prayer. The, 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 the bonus here is, He will give us reward based on the very best salah you ever had in your life. And it's as though that was every single salah in your life. SubhanAllah. That's when, when a person holds on to their faith, when times are hard, this is what Allah rewards them with. Then Allah talks about the parents. He says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ لِتُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا We told the parents, we, 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 we counseled human beings to be good to parents. Why are parents being mentioned? Because parents can be the biggest trial. The entire passage is about what? Trial, right? So being good to parents can be a very big trial for any human being. And even if they're struggling against you to do shirk with Allah, then don't, don't obey them and keep, keep good company to them. So he says, مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمْ فَلَا تُطِعُمَا Don't follow them because what happened with Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu is he was, he was with his mom, he lived with his mom, his mom took care of him his whole, whole life, she loved, he loved her to death. And when he became Muslim, he was a teenager, he became Muslim and his mom said, how could you hurt me like this? You became Muslim? You've, you've humiliated me. You've, you've, you know, you've showed me no loyalty. You hurt me so much. And she said, I am not going to eat until you leave your faith. I want you to come back to the way you used to be. My son, this is not my son. I don't want this. I don't want this evil religion. And she stopped eating. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, she's not the only one. She's suffering physically. But Sa'ad in his heart is going through hell because his mother is suffering. And Allah says, and if they struggle against you, they fight against you to make you do shit, to leave a teaching of your religion. And the, by parents, a larger principle is being taught. Doesn't matter who loves you, if they're making you do something out of love for them that disobeys Allah, don't obey them. Ilayya marji'ukum. You're, you're going to have to come back to me. You will lose those people. You won't lose me. One day all those people will die. And you will die. But when all of you die, you'll come back to me. You're not answerable to people, you're answerable to Allah. إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Then I will tell you of all the things you used to do. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ فِي الصَّالِحِينَ I'm almost done now. I know I'm over my time, I'll take three more minutes. He says, and those of you that have faith and do good deeds, remember the first time he said, I'll pay you based on your best deeds? The second time he says, I will, put, I will absolutely put you in the company of good people. We will absolutely enter them into the company of good people, of righteous people. What that means is, when you go through such a trial and you hold on to your faith, maybe there are some toxic people around you. Maybe there are people that are no good for you. You think they're good for you because you feel good being around them, but the truth is they're not good for you. Just like some foods are not healthy, but they feel good when you eat them. You know? There are some practices that are not healthy, but they're very, they're, they're, they're calming. Some people turn to alcohol because it makes them feel good, but it's toxic for them. It destroys their lives. People turn to drugs because it gives them a high, it makes them feel good, but it destroys their lives and the lives of those around them, right? The same way, sometimes there are people that are like a, a, a poison around you. They may, you may not see them that way, and you don't get to accuse them of being that way, but there are toxic people around you, you may not realize it. Allah says, if you continue to hold on to your faith and do good deeds, I will absolutely bring you into the company of good people. Allah's promises in this life, well, he's, He doesn't guarantee us money and health and house and none of that stuff. But one thing He does guarantee, you hold on to me, I will bring you, I'll bring people in your life that are good for you. And that's not just in this world, but also in heaven.